Hey everybody, many of you have visited KFC at least once in your life, and we ordered such a bucket of chicken. Here you have breaded legs, strips, and wings. It's all really tasty. So we decided to cook the same bucket, just not from chicken, but from ostrich. First of all, we ordered a huge bucket that was made special for us. Inside it has a spacer, as straight as the original. First of all, we cover the bucket with a layer of primer. Done. Now we paint white from the inside. And we cover the outside with red paint. Then we gave the bucket to an artist. You'll see the result later. We go to the store for some ostrich meat. We bought two huge pieces of ostrich meat. Throw it into the car. They weigh around 43 kilograms. And the check turned out to be for $760. Then we go to the hypermarket. We load 120 liters of sunflower oil directly into the car with boxes. Now you need olive oil, paprika, ginger, black pepper, basil, oregano, dry garlic, and lots of flour and cornflakes without sugar. The whole full cart costs us $285. We have two hefty ostrich legs. They still have the skin on them. It is unrealistically durable, so much so that they make shoes out of it, so it needs to be removed. With one hand, we pull off the skin and use the knife to separate it from the meat. There you go. We cut off the unnecessary pieces of fat Now we've cleaned one leg thoroughly. We repeat the same thing with the second one. When the two legs have been perfectly cleaned, you need to separate the shin from the skin. We do everything as carefully as possible so as not to chop the meat. We separate the bone along the joint. And we're left with two pieces, bone and flesh. The second one is cut lengthwise into two parts. In the future, these will be strips. We divide the second leg exactly the same way. There you go, the cutting's over. We have two bones and four sirloin pieces, but the fillet doesn't have the same shape we need. So if you like it like that, then it can fall apart. Let's use twine. With its help, we'll tie together a piece of meat. That's how it should turn out. We wrap it all four pieces like this. And we're done. To make the marinade pass better into the meat, we'll use a thing with spikes. We just use it to punch through the pieces. And then we take a bath like this, put ground ginger, paprika, oregano and basil into it, black pepper, dry garlic, lots of salt, mustard, and a liter of olive oil. Now we mix all this up and pour in 20 liters of hot water. The spices will open up better like that. We lower the pieces of ostrich into the marinade. Add more water to cover all the meat.
and leave it to marinate overnight. Now it's well softened. We spread some foil onto a table, parchment on top of that, Now we get out our future strip. Let the excess marinade drain and put it out onto the parchment and wrap it up. We rack the legs the same way. We do the same thing for every piece. Now take a baking sheet and put sealed pieces of ostrich on it. The first stage of cooking will take place in our huge oven. We put four refractory bricks on the cart. We put a baking sheet on top. And put that into the oven. Now we'll leave the meat to cook for eight hours at a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. Finally, the time has passed. We'll take it out of the oven. Let's cut the foil and see what's inside. The meat is definitely well cooked. Now we'll open up the rest of the pieces and cut off all the twine. We don't need that anymore. In order to deep fry such huge pieces of meat, you need a large vat and the oil we bought at the store. We open the boxes. We take out the bottles, open them, and pull the oil into the vat. Turns out we pour out about 120 liters. In order to heat this oil, we pour some heated coals into two braziers. Now we need to chop some wood. After that, we lay that all out on the grill. Now we just need to keep a good fire going for two hours. You'll need a grid like this. On that, we're gonna put the meat into the deep fryer. We take three plastic basins. In one, we put water. In the second, flour. And in the third, we'll put three packs of cornflakes in without sugar. First, we'll put the ostrich leg into flour and roll it around on all sides. Then we lower it down into the water. And back into the flour. Back to the water. Flour, water, and the last stage is flakes. We're trying to cover the entire meat area with this. The braided leg is now placed on the grate. According to the same principle, we braided all the other pieces. The final step is lowering it into the deep fryer. Now we just need to keep the maximum heat so that the oil doesn't cool down. And after about 10 minutes of active boiling, we lift the grate. That's it, the KFC ostrich recipe is ready. By the way, this is how beautiful the bucket turned out after they painted a portrait of Colonel Sanders. We'll fill that with the breaded ostrich.
You know, I think it turned out really cool and just like the original. Let's cut off a piece. Inside the meat turned out really juicy. Let's try it. Hello everyone. As a child, one of my most favorite sweets were these gummy worms with different flavors. And today, I decided to make a huge version of it. Our first taste will be unusual, carrot. We take a basin and begin to peel the carrots with a vegetable peeler. The clean and peeled carrots are sent to the basin. And so we clean out all 30 kilograms. We filled the base with a large bunch. Now we take a juicer, substitute in the juice bowl, and turn the carrot into carrot juice. The first bowl was filled and we will accumulate juice in buckets. Therefore, we pull it from the bowl. Carrots are not very juicy, so the cake container has already overflowed. We clean it. And continue in the same spirit until we completely empty the bowl. Done. The result was 10 liters of juice. And the second flavor will be orange. Pour the fruit into the sink. Fill it up with water. And each orange needs to be thoroughly washed. In order to extract the maximum from an orange, you need also its extract. To do this, remove the thinnest top layer of zest with a vegetable peeler. It is in that aromatic essential oils are stored. We cut off the zest of about 10 oranges. And now we chop it up with a knife. We will extract the fragrance using the Soclet extractor. We send a piece of gauze to the extraction flask. And fill it to the brim with our orange peel. Another one of gauze. And we move on to the second flask. It's a refrigerator. To make it work, it needs to be filled with as cold of water as possible. The hole is sealed with tape so that it doesn't leak out. Done. The last flask remains, and we will pour two bottles of alcohol into it. After all, it is alcohol that dissolves essential oil as well. Assemble a system of these three flasks. We take an electric stove and put an extractor on it and turn it on at medium power. The alcohol heats up and as soon as it reaches 78 degrees, it begins to boil and steam rises up through our system. As soon as it reaches the refrigerator, it immediately cools down. And in the form of condensation, it flows into the extractor where it dissolves the essential oils contained in the orange peel. Subsequently, alcohol with a powerful orange smell flows back into the lower flask. 
and so on in a circle. An hour later, the natural orange flavor is ready, and it is very rich. <sighs> Back to the oranges. Citrus juicer, two buckets. A sieve goes on top and you can start. Cut the orange in half. The pulp is pressed against the juicer and it squeezes out the juice as efficiently as possible. We filled up our first cup. You can pour through a sieve into a bucket. And we throw out all the delayed particles so that the sieve does not clog. We pass all the oranges through the juicer. And we're left with 10 liters of juice. As a mold for the worm, we will use a corrugated pipe. Normal people use it for hoods. We stretch it to a length of about one and a half meters. Done. We also need two balloons. Inflate them so that they stretch to the maximum. The main thing is not to burst yourself with such tension. And we blow it back. We cut off the narrow neck and pull on one side of the tube. This is necessary so that the edges of the future worm are rounded. We connect the plastic clamps together and fix the ball with them so that it doesn't fly off. On the other side of the pipe, we pour some oil and turn the pipe to lubricate every fold inside. That's it, the oil can be drained. The second ball is dipped in oil. Turned right inside out. And also pulled onto the pipe. And we fix it exactly the same way. And in the middle of the pipe, we make a small incision. And we bend it a little bit so that there's a little bit of place to pour the jello. To separate the layers, insert the cardboard. And so that it doesn't pop out, fix it with a screw. We proceed to the preparation of the jelly itself. We need two large pots and pour two types of juice into them. To make the taste richer, add citric acid and sugar. And our flavoring is also added to the orange juice. All of this is thoroughly mixed. Now you need 10 kilograms of gelatin. The strength of gelatin is measured in grams. If it in stores about 150 bloom, then we have 250. In general, it's much more powerful. We fill it with a measuring cup and put it in there into the saucepan, stirring constantly. Five kilograms of gelatin should be poured into each of the juices. It immediately swells up and our juices no longer looks like liquid. We put the pots on the stove. 
turn on the burners and start mixing up our mass. After 40 minutes of continuous stirring, the gelatin is finally melted. We transfer the pans closer to the mold. We collect another hot mass and pour it carefully into the mold. This way we gradually fill out our form completely with fruit jelly. Then we remove the partition. And I gotta say that this was in vain because it was necessary to wait for the jelly to set a little bit. We turn on the air conditioner and let the form all night sit. The next morning, the jelly was completely frozen. Let's cut the shape lengthwise. Begin to open it. After that, we simply roll our giant jelly worm onto the table. And it turned out to be the right shape. Every fold of the pipe was imprinted. But the tastes, unfortunately, are kind of mixed. We got a carriage orange worm. But that's not all. We remembered that there are still such worms in the dusting with a richer taste. And decided to do something similar with our own. Just sprinkled it with citric acid. And sugar. Well, let's cut off a piece and try it. And you know what? It turned out pretty delicious. It's like the carrot wasn't even there. The taste is pure orange. And the flavor is so powerful that the smell of the zest remained, despite the fact that we diluted it in a large volume of juice. In general, the giant jelly worm was a success. And if you want to cook something huge, then put a lot of likes on this video, you guys. Write in the comments what to cook for me, okay? Bye, everybody.